recorded live with little or no editing. It's Defense Up. I'm Run7. How you doing? Today, I have a special starter defense for you. Um, Ciro, I, I love this name too, by the way. Uh, Ciro sent me in these, these picks, and it was kind of on a whim, and, and I kind of fell in love with what he's doing because he's a newer player, and he thought ahead about some trickery. And that's why I'm not showing you team number one, because team number one is my favorite of all. But these are some things you can do as a newer player to try and uh, uh, create a little imbalance and catch people off guard. You can't do this later on because you'll have built certain tunes up and invested certain things past a point where this stuff works. But some of these are pretty interesting and, and I like them a lot. Now team number two isn't all that great and I actually think team number two is a waste right here. Uh, oh, we grade on five different criteria by the way. Who you're using their placement, their power levels, their ISOs and what kind of mood I'm in. Uh, I don't like what's going on here. Now, we haven't over invested in the wrong ISOs. He put Fortifier on his smaller tunes because they're smaller and he just did level one uh, because it doesn't hardly cost you anything. So that's okay. I'm not going to dock him too hard, but I would like to see the correct ISOs as these members get built up a little bit. I have trouble telling people this late in the game to build Colson. He just doesn't have the value. At the late game, for people who got him on when he first came out, he can still be used in a lot of places, but he's not worth building up. Okay, so what we do have is we've got Maria Hill in here, and she is going to uh, heal people that block. Uh, she also has some shield synergy with these two characters, and then I think Thing is just a leftover tune who is very easy to farm. And so Thing got thrown in here as a damage dealer. So you got a healer and a damage dealer. You got your protector trying to keep them from getting killed. And then you've got Coulson and this minion that's absolute trash. I refuse to even remember their name thrown in here as an afterthought. We're going to see some other tunes later on that I'm going to want to shift back to this team. Kind of a filler team. It's something in the works. Um, it, it, this... Uh, Fortifier ISO is a placeholder for future growth. You can do that and, and feel confident putting them at level one because it doesn't cost hardly anything to do it. It's like one ISO crystal, who cares? So for right now, I think this is a pretty meh team. It's just un in the works, under construction kind of thing. So I'm giving it a C. I'm curious where C row goes with it in the future. Uh, whoops, that's not working. So we need to hit this and then I can tab over. There we go. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Brotherhood 2.0 with Emma in here instead of Pyro. Um, honestly, I think Pyro is a better choice for this team than Emma. Uh, I think Pyro allows you to do a lot of things and his bleeds are pretty powerful. It's, But it's also probably a better offensive team than it is a defensive team. So if you're not... If you're not going to go pyro and offense with this team, I think maybe you should break this team up and use the parts. But he's trying something in here. He's trying to give this team a little bit more time uh, to get to get going, which is weird because this is a team that blows things up up front and then falls off at the back end. Um, clear, clears and heal, cleanse and heal from Emma, though, so maybe help keep them alive so they can sustain longer. I'm not really sure. Toad's going to pop off fast, put the taunt on Blob. Uh, then Juggernaut's going to carry the taunt over next. Magneto's going to blind people early. Uh, Toad's clearing special or positive effects from the other team. And Emma's clearing negative effects from this team. Blob's giving deflex to adjacent characters. It's got some sustainability for a Brotherhood team. It's okay. I don't like the healer ISO. I like Blob as a skirmisher in most cases. Uh, especially defense, I like him as a skirmisher. Like on this, he's counterattacking almost every single time. I think, is it Brotherhood or Mutant Villain? I think it's Brotherhood. So he's attacking four times out of five. He's counterattacking when he's hit. So he would be placing vulnerables all over the field for Magneto to work off of as a striker. By the way, I think Magneto should be a raider, not a striker. I think Juggernaut should be a raider, not a healer. Um, he, His health bar, relatively speaking, isn't that big anymore. And so I think... Uh, more vulnerables on the field is better. Then if you were to have Pyro in here as a striker, Pyro could be putting up that many more bleeds with all those vulnerables. He'd be double tapping and adding bleeds to the field. Uh, Skirmisher on Toad all the way. I think he should be a level five to make sure he clears the positive effects from the people coming into this team. Yeah, so um, the other way you can go is on offense. If Pyro's a striker and he's throwing out the disrupts, then you can make Blob a 
striker also, and he will go into those disrupts and vulnerables, and he'll rewind turn meter. But he doesn't rewind turn meter unless there's a disrupt on the field, and you kind of got to pilot that team, so I don't like that unless you're on offense with, with Pyro in there. As is, I'm going to say this is like a B-. minus. I think there's way better things to do with Emma. I think there's way better things to do with the pieces of this team. But at a beginner status, it's hard to use, it's hard to make those hybrid teams because you don't have enough stuff left over. And maybe he's just trying to skip Pyro because honestly, it, later in the game, Pyro is totally useless. Team number four. Here's a Pimtech team done entirely wrong. <laughs> the only good thing is that again... ISO level one, no investment in the tunes that don't matter. Slight investment in Yellow Jacket. If you don't have that raid lane, don't invest in Yellow Jacket. Uh, Ghost is being built up for other things. Ghost is the one that's important. Uh, I would like you to do a placement swap with Wasp and Ant-Man, although that doesn't really matter. They're probably going to die. Uh, you should be Fortifier on, on Stature. Uh, Striker, excuse me, I just uh, screwed that up, didn't I? Let's go with this tab and hit the minus button. There we go, back to the right size. Okay, I clicked on my screen, sorry. We want Fortifier on Stature, we want Striker on Ghost, not Healer. Uh, you want the Striker on her so you can double tap into Vulnerables and rewind a lot of turn meter. Uh, you're gonna go, what do we want on Yellow Jacket. Is it Striker, I think? No, it's Skirmisher. I'm sorry. Skirmisher on Yellow Jacket. Skirmisher on Ant-Man. That's because they get called in for assists by Ghost. They place a Vulnerable, and then Ghost can double tap into that and rewind a lot of turn meter. So change those ISOs now. You only need to go level 1 Skirmisher. It's fine. Uh, you didn't waste anything by making them a, a level 1 Fortifier. That's the thing you do. When you don't know what to do, go level 1 Fortifier or level 1 Healer, or I honestly prefer level 1 Skirmisher, but go level 1 if you don't know what to do, because then they'll have an ISO that gives you some value, and it doesn't cost you hardly anything. And then Wasps should be a Raider also. Um, and then I, I want the, the placement swap there. So a lot of things you could be doing differently. The good news is, is you didn't waste anything screwing this team up so far. So change those ISOs, change that placement, and I'll give you an A for it. As is, I'm gonna go a B, just simply because you didn't screw it up wastefully. All right, team number five is, ooh, this is no good. This is no good. So it's a quasi wave one, quasi as guardians. The problem is, is that Hela is on this team and she's gonna be putting Greg out there and that's gonna allow speed meta teams to come into this. Now, like we said yesterday, um, a lot of people aren't gonna either have the speed meta teams available to go into this or they're gonna be overbuilt and not wanna punch down into this at the level that you're working at. So it's, it's kind of okay. So I'm not gonna fail you for it, but I'd like to see you do either a straight as Guardians or go with a straight wave one and maybe Heimdall in there in place of Black Widow. But go ahead and get Captain America unlocked and built up to like 50K and throw him in here instead of Hela. Um, let's see, Hela should be a Raider, not a healer. Her health bar sucks. Uh, a healer's kind of a waste on her. Heimdall should be a Raider. Thor should be a raider. Man, you went level five on healer. That's no good. Uh, Hulk should be a healer. That's good. Captain America is going to be a healer when you put him in here. And then again, you've got Hawkeye underpowered, didn't know what to do, went level one fortifier. That's okay. You didn't waste anything. Um, you might consider, honestly, I think you're closer to an Avengers than a wave one. Probably get rid of Hawkeye and Hulk and then throw in Loki and, and uh, Sif is probably the way you should go, because you're closer. And then as, as you grow, as your alliance starts getting tougher and tougher wards, you're gonna wanna ditch this as guardian defense and go with either a wave one or use the pieces elsewhere or something like that. So uh, yeah, you're, you're all over the place on this one, man. This one's no good. Um, but again, newer players, newer alliances, can afford to do as guardians because a lot of us don't have access to those speed meta teams. So did I grade this one? I don't know what, oh man, I have trouble grading this. It's all over the place. I'm gonna go D plus on this. This is kind of a hot mess, actually. It's kind of a hot mess. It needs a lot of work. Okay, team number six 
is the Hydra Red Skull team. This is fantastic. This is fantastic. You have a Red Skull who you're probably using elsewhere in the game, and so you built him up. He's actually a really cool character. He's versatile and can be used for a lot, lot of things. You did kind of a minimal investment in your minions to make them as effective as you can. You kind of min-max them, as we say. Um, you have the proper ISOs on just about everybody. I'd like Grenadier to either be a skirmisher or a striker, depending on who, where you're gonna use him with Zemo and the rest of the game. But skirmisher or striker on Grenadier. Um, you went skirmisher here. That's probably a better gonna be a fortifier, but you already invested in it. Don't worry about it. In fact, you don't need to change this healer on, on Grenadier. It's, it's good enough. Um, another thing that people can do is they can go straight fortifier on these minions. They die and revive and come back with barrier, and it's very effective on this team. Uh, I, I like everything you're doing here. The placement's fine. Uh, you got Red Skull in here breaking it up because he doesn't take any damage. He won't take. He takes zero damage on this team until you start clearing these minions, and so you're you're creating like people that hit three at a time. They, they can't attack here, they have to attack over here. I'd probably move your tank to the outside, swap places with Grenadier, and then I think you're gonna be doing really good. Yeah, I think you're gonna be doing really good. I, I like everything you're doing here, but that placement swap would probably improve it. So A- minus for that team, good job. Highly recommend this team for newer players. Small investment, big reward for defense. It's, it's a shame it's not very effective elsewhere. There are hybrids that people use Hydra for on offense. Um, Red Skull has a lot of value with that 30% turn meter for the entire team. There's things that can be done with this team, but mostly it's just a really potent offense or a potent defense for the money. All right, team number seven is a Merc team with Falcon, or I'm sorry, Sam. Same guy, different costume. Uh, and then you put Ultron in here. Okay, so it's kind of like a Doom Mercs, but you went Ultron instead. And that's okay. That's okay. I think it's a good fit. I think you should go ahead and put a different Merc in place of Captain Sam here because although Captain Sam is going to help speed up Ultron and on this build, that's a pretty good fit. That's a pretty good fit giving Ultron more speed to get going and, and gets this guy to his taunt faster and all that. Like, I kind of like it. I think a better choice would be throwing in Falcon instead because Falcon's going to help with the turn meter but not as fast, so it's not as good. But the thing is, is that if you take Captain Sam and bring him back to, where are we? We wanna go here. If you bring Captain Sam back to this team, Captain Sam has all those deflex, and he's gonna be helping Maria Hill heal this team up. And so I think Captain Sam should go in here and place on team number two. However, <clears throat> another thing you could do is take Ultron off of this team and put Maria Hill on this team. And now she's keeping all your mercs alive, making it tough for them. Also, you're getting deflex off of this merc riot guard. So everybody, like you're getting tons of blocks out of this team. And I think it's gonna be fantastic. I think that's a great way to go. In fact, now that I think about it, put Ultron on that team number two or whatever it was and put Maria Hill over here. I think, I think that's gonna be uh, way better. Um, and then the other thing I, I want you to do is I want you to build up a, a Lieutenant. I know he's a minion, I know it hurts to invest in minions, but you'll get a lot of value out of this defense if you could bring him up. Maybe one more gear tier or just put some more gold into him. If you don't want to use the gear, just put some gold into him, you know? Get him, get him up a little higher, I think, is what you should do because, man, he's 20k under the next guy and that's a chink in the armor for this team. Um, I like... I like that you have some synergy between Ultron and Cap Sam. Um, I like that you went Skirmisher, Striker, Striker with your minions. I think that's great. I don't know why you have Ultron as a healer. I think he should definitely be a striker, but uh, is what it is and it's too expensive to change it now. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna give you a B for this team. I think it's fun and creative, it's different. I haven't ever seen anything like this. And because you maybe don't have access to Sharon Carter, it's, it's a cool thing to do um, with your with your SA team. All right, moving on to team number eight. This is a skill military leftover. This is another thing newer players can do. The skill military team is not worth building for offense, especially at this point in the game. It is an expensive luxury team for high-end OG players. It is not good for newer players to build up. There is some value in most of these characters, not these two really, they're only for skill mill. But these three have some value in different situations in the game. And so I think maybe you should uh, 
well, don't build this team anymore. I mean, this team isn't worth building, but this team is a good, like you just threw them together. And it's not the traditional skill military, but she's got a military tag and gives these guys bonuses because they all got the military tag. Um, you can put them in a room where they get the military bonus on defense. Or, or wait, they get a bonus on defense from something. Anyway, they got the military tag and that's good synergy there. This guy's gonna give him some boosts. All he does is 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 uh, spawn in for his value. So I really think you should change him to a skirmisher. I mean, don't, it's too expensive. You've over invested, but for newer players, people who are building skill military for some strange reason, start him out as a skirmisher. That way he just puts that extra vulnerable on the field for when you're running Punisher on this team. She should be a raider, not a healer. Her health bar is pathetic for this team. Uh, that's kind of a mistake. You put her as a healer, which is a secondary choice. I like Striker better. But as a healer, she can kind of keep herself alive and be stubborn. She, she was the Emma before Emma came around. She was the one that you couldn't kill because she would just heal up so much. So healer's a, a, an okay choice. I won't dock you for that. I like healer over here and I like raider over here. Um, yeah, so two ISO changes. You probably overinvested in this team already, but you're making a decent defense. Uh, you could also use Black Widow and Punisher on this team, but they can be used elsewhere. And, and I, I don't think you have those guys up and running, so this is what you did. It's okay. Some mistakes were made. Placement's decent. It's okay. I'm going to go with a C plus for that. Team number nine is your heroes for hire. Um, I like everything you do on this team. You have Iron Fist as a Raider, and Raider is okay. I'm not going to dock people for Raider anymore. I have seen the value of Raider. When he comes in with that big overhand punch that he telegraphs like crazy, and I don't know why people can't dodge that, uh, he can crit on that, and it does a lot of damage. It does a lot of damage. And he doesn't get much use as a healer because all the counters use so much heal block. So I'm okay with Raider on that. I love your placement. The power levels of this team is great. It's just where you need it to be to force people to use something good on it. They can't just like punch down with some trash. They have to use a synergized team and that's all you really need it to do. And you can stop there and spend your resources elsewhere. Love the ISOs, the placement. Everything you're doing here is fun. I actually like that you tried something a little different here. I'm gonna give you an A for that team. Team number 10 is the... Okay, wow. Wow. Holy crap, nothing's stopping this, are they? Okay, check this out. So Chavez gives 25% turn meter to Cersei. Uh, Loki gives a little extra speed for Cersei. Loki's probably redundant in this. Cersei's gonna go, rewind turn meter, um, and then Icarus and or Kestrel is going to go and kill everybody. Yeah, I think the turn meter rewind on Cersei should be enough to slow the opponents down before Icarus takes his turn, but it might not be enough. It might not be enough. So I think Kestrel is redundant on this team. If Icarus doesn't kill him, you shouldn't have brought Kestrel in here. I think Loki is redundant on this team because, um, well, Loki's redundant on this team on this build, and here's why. You want Icarus and Cersei to both be sped up by Chavez. You want Loki on this team simply to make Cersei go before Icarus, so she will soften up the enemies, and then Icarus will do his double tap for sure. And then you can replace uh, Kestrel with... I don't know, like, if you happen to have Thanos unlocked, throw in Thanos and put him adjacent to uh, Icarus. That way Icarus gets all the turn meter in the world and he does it again the next time around, right? It's a thing to do. I just think that this is a waste of your Kestrel. I think that they're, they could still get in front of Icarus and it worries me. So let's keep Loki, but let's change the placement. Let's put Icarus next to Chavez and let's replace Kestrel with uh, Thanos if you don't have the entire Black Order. If you have the entire Black Order, then use the team on offense. Otherwise, you could throw in something else like, I don't know, maybe you got Deathpool, but you don't have the rest of the new warriors. You could put Deathpool in here. She's not gonna give energy, I don't think. I think that's only in raids, but she will do some cleanup work for all those kills. 
Um, alternatively, you could put in a Drax, so it forces people who come in here to stumble. If you unlock Echo, you could throw an Echo in here. That will help against the Infinity Watch counter because they won't be able to do assists. So lots of options you could do. I think this is a B for me, maybe even a B minus. I think it's a waste of your Kestrel. Um, and I'm not sure if, if the placement is actually, uh, yeah. It's a waste of Loki in the way you have the placement. You don't need him in here for this placement. She's already gonna go first and faster. So let's switch that placement. Let's swap that character out with somebody else. And I'll give you an A plus for saving money and skipping the YA team. And yes, I do think that new players should be skipping this team. The team is not trash. It's a very good team. It's a solid defense. And I think Scopely absolutely nailed it. They got a, a almost invincible team has a handful of counters but the more you invest in the ya the more those counters stumble and i think that's just exactly where defensive teams should be and they gave us the opportunity to theory craft with the pieces of the team without having to invest in the entire team so big shout out to scopely of all people I think they did a great job on the YA team, and I think we should stop complaining about it, and I think newer players should go ahead and skip it. It's a war defense team. War defense teams traditionally are only good for OG Kraken spenders, and the rest of us, like Dolphins Down, can pass on the team. Save up for the Dark Hunters. Now, team number one, and check this one out. This one's the special one, okay? Look at this. Now, I want you guys to understand, this is actually, okay, Ghost Rider is specifically built on this team. His abilities are 1165. He has a T4 in his uh, passive, and he's uh, very powerful on his ultimate and nothing else, right? Brought him up to gear tier 13, minimal star investment because it's just the red. Like this is the epitome of min-maxing a character. Then he has a pre-taunting tank that's fresh out of the gates, another pre-taunting tank fresh out of the gates, and a third tank to pick up the taunt after these two die. Somebody goes into this team thinking, oh, it's 50K. They're gonna lose if they don't way overdo this. Uh, now, Ciro has told me that he's never had a team under 250K beat this. Can you imagine the DVs stacking up when people underestimate what's going on here? Every time somebody comes in there, they have to kill one, two, three, even four tanks before they can even take a swing at Ghost Rider. And Ghost Rider is going to retaliate for massive damage and annihilate people. Not to mention Ghost Rider's fast. He gets around to his ultimate a lot. Especially with, I think uh, when people die, he gets like more ability energy or something. That might be with Supernaturals, I'll have to check. I've never looked into a defense like this. This is extremely amazing to me. I think this is awesome. I wish I could, I wish I could turn off my abilities so I could go back and do something like this. This is an A plus team for me. This took some high IQ thinking and I think it is just amazing. And if you're a new player and you haven't invested in any of these tunes, this is a thing you can do to get some crazy wins in the very beginning of the game. I mean, think about it. He only had to invest a little bit into Ghost Rider, and he's taking down 250k plus teams with with a 50k team. This is incredible. So I'm really excited about this. I've seen stuff like this in RTA, but I've never seen somebody specifically build a defense in war like this. So uh, good job to Ciro on this defense. Thank you for sending this in to me. If you have some crazy ass defenses and you want to show them off, please find my links in the description below. Message me in Discord. We'll get you on the list for defense up and we can take a look at yours and grade them. Um, sometimes I grade people challenging uh, and sometimes I go real easy on people. Kind of depends on what mood I'm in. I was excited about this one and I thought it was really interesting and I wanted to share it with the, the newer players are going to find a lot of value out of this one. So remember guys, don't just have a good game. Be good to yourselves and others too and I will catch you next time. Thanks. Bye.